It's like Ed Sheeran. I, I can't stand his music, but I'm sure I'd get along with him if we yeah. hung out. You know, hundred percent, hundred. Oh, he's such a nice guy. Uh, I think Kim, Kim says that his mother must have wished, 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 like, or um, what? How does she say it? Something along the lines of, like, his mother must be so excited that he's such a good person he can get laid, <laughs> despite the way he looks. <laughs> Damn, that's my wife. Hello and welcome guys to this episode of Stories the True and the Fictional, or should we say Story Chat. We have an exciting returning guest, Martin Kearns, but before we bring him in, uh, we should let you know that this episode is sponsored by Rebecca Castles and the Rising Dawn series. If you've been listening to the show a while, you've probably catched on that we talk about her every single episode, almost as much as Henry Cavill. Um, but <laughs> check, <laughs> check, <laughs> check out her books on... Um, Amazon Kindle um, and in paperback as well. If you're into the uh, supernatural paranormal romance, romance, paranormal romance, that's it. Yes. Um, yes. Werewolf romance, but it's uh, very good uh, action drama and a lot of smut, apparently. Um, I think I saw that on the back of the book, Jamie. Werewolf, werewolf romance, but it's really good. I think that <laughs> was a crack it open in the car. The so there you go, Martin. If you want Jamie to write some, a comment for your book, he, he goes all out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, Martin, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good, good. I'm good. Going good. It's good to be back. Very good. Very good. We do. We, 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 even though we had a barbecue yesterday, we we don't drink anymore because we're old. Um, so no hangovers. So it's awesome. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. I would have been. I would would have would have still been asleep at the moment. So, yes. But yes, yeah. happy Thanksgiving for last week, by the way. Ah, Even thank you very much. Yes, I had a good yes. Thanksgiving. Was it the Thursday? Thursday over there. It's it's the uh, last Thursday in November. Yeah. So yeah. It was they, Thursday. Are they kind enough to give everyone the Friday off work? No, not oh. people in retail because they have to get the shoppers oh, and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So, um. So it's funny over here in Australia, we've adopted part of Thanksgiving. We've adopted Black Friday for some reason. All week we've been like, Black Friday sale, Black Friday sale. Like, but we don't even do Thanksgiving. It's the damn internet. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's <laughs> leeching all the bad stuff from here over there. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then what I what I don't understand is I get confused about Black Friday because we don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but also uh, the Black Friday sales over here have been running all week from Monday yeah. Well, it's just, it's, yeah, it, it makes is, is no it really sense. a Black Friday if it starts on Monday? I'm glad you brought that up because I, I saw this coming with Cyber Monday. And then I was yeah, going to be waiting Monday. for like titillating Tuesday or whatever they were going to do next and just keep <laughs> expanding. And then Christmas is just growing until it devours Halloween. Mm -hmm. it's I, I, I saw the perfect thing. representation of Black Friday. It was, it was a meme where there's, um you know, it says Wednesday for a TV, $1,299. Thursday, twelve hundred ninety nine dollars. Friday, nine nineteen hundred dollars slash to twelve hundred dollars. That's great. That's what the retailers will do. They will just mark up your prices. You know, I mean, you very rarely have I been able to catch a genuine bargain. You know, obviously yeah. we're in Australia, so it's not as prevalent as over there. But um, you know, that everyone's like sixty seven percent off, and then you go to another site and you can find it even cheaper than the Black Friday price. It's just. <laughs> Yeah. usually yeah the only one we ever got um we were never big into that stuff but we went to get a blanket that my wife has stolen from me it's now all hers um That's what they it do. was marked down from like 200 to 50 that is what they do but she <laughs> she sectioned off the bed so she's she, it's her side she has her big cushy blanket that we bought like 10 years ago on a black friday and, and then on my side but for my birthday this year she did get me something really similar but it's blue so okay. now we have our two separate that, that, and that's it's my fault i'm sorry i keep stealing your blanket so he's he's yeah. an exact replica which yeah. i'll probably end up stealing anyway <laughs> exactly she did it for the good of the marriage because i was just <laughs> ripping the blanket off her in the middle of the night well that's that's why I, I came up with this idea ages ago i don't know how to make it happen but um and it's weird that I came up with it because I'm, you know, I'm not married. I don't have a partner or anything like that. But like, picture you, if you will, a blanket that goes round the bed like a conveyor belt. You know, okay. so if, if she tries to steal your blanket, it just keeps going round the, you know. That's a very that's good a, idea. That's a really good idea. I, I could just, see. 
a lot of insurance a lot of money. <laughs> how many people would like an escalator to get wrapped yeah. up in it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i can see a Will Ferrell movie in that seriously yeah. like <laughs> I, I, I like I, the way I, your brain works though jamie that's a cool one yeah but you know like i just need people to fund it and, yeah, uh, you need to start a <laughs> start up for it or yeah that's it <laughs> um all right do you want to crack into these brand new icebreakers we can give it a yeah, shot we've only done these ones once before haven't we jamie yes that's that's correct no yes that's right that's right i was trying to remember how many people we've had on um mm. yes you are the second martin the second second the mm. second yes we we had a horror writer on uh, chad miller was it jamie yep oh yeah. my it's horrible so i apologize i remember from um, listening to the episode yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was funny because he did the he did the episode in his car with his daughter and she was very well behaved. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even realize she was in the car until she stuck her head around. So <laughs> Chad, uh, email the fellas and they'll send it on to me. Tell me how you do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. well, I'll take the I'll take the first question, Jamie. Um so Martin, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh this is a hard one because I didn't have any aspirations of being like a fireman or anything like that, mm. but I had my 1030 AM ritual every Saturday morning. Guess which cartoon show came on? Ninja Turtles. Maybe. Which one? Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Ninja Turtles was on earlier. <laughs> oh, okay. and they oh, wow. Then they replaced it with Cowboys of Mumesa for a second. And that was a <laughs> catastrophe. I was mad. Wow. <laughs> um, but at 1030, it was always X-Men. Oh, every day da, so da, 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 yep da, da, the original da, 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 theme song and did you two know that they're coming back out with it yeah i was gonna yeah, ask you gonna how be... you feel about that so it's a continuation so i feel pretty good about it so they're not it's remaking an excuse it. to go and rewatch the whole thing on disney plus again anyway so which is probably what they were thinking right yeah <laughs> i did i did recently watch the first few episodes um it takes a bit to get back into it because oh yeah I just, I, I, I yeah, it's just the, the animation <laughs> that we used to now. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's a bit of a syncing issue on Disney Plus with some of the voices too. So oh, but once you get, once you get used to it, which couple, I, I managed to get through the first season again quite easily. So, mm -hmm. all right. But, um, Doesn't surprise me. Well, there so. you go. So, what, so what X Men so did you want to be? Which, there, there's the question. <laughs> which one do you think I wanted to be? Oh, Cyclops. Yeah. Yeah, everyone wanted to be Cyclops. Or I look know. like I would want to be a Cyclops. I look very um, apple pie and all that. Yeah. No, nah, I was I was all Wolverine. I wanted the cigar oh, yeah. hanging out of the mouth. I wanted, you know, that rough and tumble sort of thing. I want to be Logan. That yeah. was like my idol. And then um, I always wondered why he didn't just stab Cyclops, actually, so he could just take Gene. <laughs> so <laughs> easy. <for him. laughs> that's, yeah. that's the entire show. I mean, yeah. once you've been, once you've, once you've gone through the Weapon S, Weapon X imprison, imprisonment, I, I think normal Joe will be okay, you know, just yeah. for murdering a fellow mutant. But um, so, well, how do you feel about him coming? How do you feel about Logan coming back for Deadpool three? I'm, I'm okay with that too. Yeah. I like how they yeah. revealed it. I knew they were going to yeah. do it though. He had to yeah. do it. Um, I'm sure he's not going to get. He's not going to abuse his body, Hugh Jackman. That is, uh, to no. get yeah. as big as he was at one time. No, but it'll be good and. Um, I think the Deadpool movies are just brilliant. So yeah, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And, and I think, um, you know, the war that they, that Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman have been having over the last, what, 10 years via Twitter and like they've been, they're really good friends, but you can see this is kind of the culmination where yeah. they're finally going to get both the characters that how they should be, you know, not, not, not um, Wolverine Origins Deadpool, <laughs> but the, the real yeah, Deadpool right. together, I think it's going to be very good. So yeah. Which That's always good for a laugh too, to watch that oh, scene again. It's the best. <laughs> I, I honestly, but, Deadpool is is one of the go to movies. If I'm feeling a bit down or low, or I just need a bit of a laugh, I chuck that on. I'll chuck it both on, and it's just yeah. I'll, you forget yeah. everything by the end of it. <laughs> good stuff. If we well, had to get a real answer out of that, I'd say probably Lumberjack. Okay. Based well, on him, yeah. Wolverine, yeah, yeah. We'll go with Wolverine. Now. <laughs> is that because he was a lumberjack in? um wolverine origins <laughs> yeah i didn't know that as a kid but me as um an almost 39 year old would have to say probably the longer yeah. <laughs> well I, I think i think you'd look very good in flannel martin so there you go you, you'll be Thank fine you. for that <laughs> appreciate it yeah 
All right. So let, let's say you get um, the opportunity to have a talking animal sidekick. What would you pick? I'm going duck bill platypus. Nice. Oh. Oh, one and of one of our own, one of the Australian animals. Okay. That's true. I I just think it's a rare character. It's probably been bullied a lot, right? <laughs> Needs some love. Nobody yeah. picks the duck bill platypus. No. Well, <laughs> hence, hence, you know, it's got po it's poisonous beak, so you know. Oh, yeah. Oh. So that's like kind of where my mind's going with it too. Maybe there's some hidden characteristics in my talking duck bill platypus where you can help me out, bite somebody yeah. in the ankle. Yeah. Why not? What, what what kind of voice? Uh, yeah, that you, was what I was going to uh, say. <laughs> now you conventionally, it's going to be some kind of squeaky thing, right? Yeah, maybe like a Lisa Simpson style voice. But let's go with like <laughs> I don't know. Let's go with like um, Lawrence Fishburne instead. <laughs> Throw the audience for a loop. Like like same accent, or or is it Lawrence Fishburne doing an Aussie accent? Let's do that. <laughs> oh, wow. let's do that even oh, better wow. now i want to hear that lawrence, i always say lawrence fishburne. i always say lawrence fishburne's face it, it's it's pretty much exactly the same as my dad so i call i call him my tv dad because just the way he acts and his mannerisms and his face it's especially in the later stuff like in blackish um uh -huh. in some of the the in the john wick movies just the way that he accentuates and talks and so he's i've Literally, I call him my TV dad. So that's um, cool. Lawrence Fishburne's a great, great pick. So we'll do Lawrence Fishburne's take on the Australian duckbill platypus for that cool. one. I, I want to see that. Be a little bit gangster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. Let's oh, see. it's my turn. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had two weeks off. I'm, I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know what day it is. Um, okay, Martin, your king, queen, your choice, king, queen, or supreme leader, or president for the day, what do you do? I, I'm going to go with a crowd pleaser on this one. I'm going to make America use the metric system. It's time. <laughs> it's time. It's going to cost a lot of money. We're going to need all new signs. But I'm teaching my son <laughs> inches and things like that. And I use yeah. the word foot. And he's like, what? Yeah. Like immediately goes to the to my feet. It's like, there's not 12 inches in there. I'm like, well, sort of, if you get it <laughs> inside, take a look. So that's going to be the first one. I think that um, only one country is going to be mad about that one. And then the other one will be U.S. centric too. I want to roll sales tax into the price tag price of yep. everything. Yep. I don't know. Did they do that there? Yeah, we did. We, we, we got the GST about 12 years ago. Yeah. We did the service tax. And they put it into it was it's just find of whatever you see online or mm -hmm. in the shop that's the price you pay including the GST it's ten percent I think but um yeah we don't have to calculate any of that stuff like you poor buggers do congratulations on being a civilized country <laughs> unfortunately we're almost to out you know fifty percent tax like it's ridiculous yeah, exactly. yeah. like it's I'm not saying it's a good tax but at least we don't have to think I mean, about ma it. maybe if it was the only tax, you know, but <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> like we get tax on tax and then on tax and then on tax. And you just like, yeah, just take all my money government. <laughs> learning that too. And it's like, you get it from income tax all the way to the spend yeah, and then yeah. taxed again. Yeah. But that's one. And then, so this one went dark. We're going to go happier <laughs> with the next one. My third decree as Supreme leader of the world will be that every Every human being, regardless of what you do, gets Wednesday off. I'm not sure about the weekends. People can still work on the weekends if they want to, but Wednesday is a no mm. work day. So it's a four-day work week with Wednesday in the middle. I like that. I like if they that. want an Two excuse for celebrating yeah. Odin. That's it. <laughs> well, I like that. Two anyway. days on, one day off. Two days on, two days off. Yeah, I'm down with that. I, I, I hail, and, hail and praise you, Supreme Leader Martin Kirk. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> As someone who works six days a week, I'll take it. You, yeah. it. you need it. Every once in a while when the stars are aligned just right, and I get a Wednesday yeah. off in the middle of the week, and I do Monday, Tuesday, and it's just the best. Yeah. You just get that Wednesday. Well, it is. It's, it's, I'm, I'm just about to start a new job on the 1st of December, and they have adopted – what I like about them is regardless – they said regardless of – they're a medical company, so uh, they said regardless of how COVID goes or not, we're keeping the two days – work from home so i work monday tuesday wednesday in the office and thursday friday from home mm. for good Why like they're not it's not something they're reassessing they just said we find it, we get better productivity that way 
Come on. Makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's that, that's probably about as close to a four day work week that I will get mm-hmm. because, you know, it's, it's, if I start at nine, I don't have to literally log on until five to nine. So that's probably right. about as close as I'm going to get. Mm-hmm. No commute. But I'm down for a four day. I, I think a lot of, and there are, it's in the news. Well, I think Sweden or Switzerland or something is trialing um, major companies over there are doing four day work weeks. They're just doing 10 hour days. Yeah. Um, to see if it works. And I would not. rather that. I would much rather that. To yeah. Be honest. Cause you're already there. You're already working. Yeah. Less commuting, you know I mean? less traffic, less pollution. Yeah. And when I, I wrote the first book, Beneath the Veil, um, when we were in lockdown, and the reason yep. why wasn't because I had so much extra time. I was working all day. But it was because yep. I got to sleep until 20 minutes before I had to turn on the phone <laughs> and the computer. And it was mm-hmm. just amazing. Yep. Um, I could stay up until midnight, one, two, three in the morning if I needed exactly. to. Mm. and still function as a human and then the second book i was like i'm dying inside slowly <laughs> <laughs> just trying so hard to stay awake it was a totally different vibe so i'm all for it i hope you guys get your your remote time and everything you too jamie yeah no it's it, jamie can't really do remote work because he has to cook together cranes not but... until they get the drones <laughs> yeah. right? i just drop it off at your house every thursday jamie you just have to bring it. <laughs> this giant no. crane in my backyard <laughs> <laughs> but, no look i think look, if it works and but you've got to be i was having a chat with i do uber part-time i was having a chat with the customer yesterday morning you've got to be able to switch off though because i found that during covid when i was 100 percent work from home i was logging on on the weekend oh there's just a few orders here i'm just going to pray before you know it it's yep. five hours you're working out of pocket taking away from your time with your family or your you know your personal time on the weekend as long as you can switch off um and that's the that's a good thing about this company. They are all about you need to stop at five o'clock. You right. know, VPNs are turned off on the weekends. You cannot access remotely on the weekends unless there's something big going on, uh, which I think is a good way to do it. But you've got to be able to switch off because I know I couldn't before. So I agree. Um, it's a yeah. it's a rabbit hole. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right, Jamie, question number four. Yeah. Speaking of uh, books, uh, so what book or story, you know, it could be a true story, could be a book, uh, would you like to see adapted to film? And uh, bonus points for picking an actor or actress, director, you know, pick your cast. This and is a great you question. Henry Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> right, bonus points you for pick, Henry Cavill. Yeah, I've been wondering about that, hearing a lot about Henry Cavill. <laughs> and then it's, it's, if there's one word or person used more often than Henry Cavill based on your icebreakers, it's Seinfeld. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent from the first round. But every every episode I hear, I'm just like, I'm waiting for it. Is it going to be Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> Works out well though. Um, so for this question, what book do I want to see made into a movie? I'm not sure if you guys have read any um, John Langan. Yep, you have. Good, yep. He's a brilliant um, horror writer. He's more literary. Yep. Um, but The Fisherman by him oh yeah yeah yeah. i think we talked about this last time too yeah because you probably i'm a big geek yeah you oh nice yeah oh he's uh he's out of control he's pretty good um and so the fisherman i think is his best novel by far and for the listeners it's a great uh pseudo urban fantasy slash horror dark maybe more horror than um a little bit in the flashback i guess is more dark fantasy but it's just great and um i think Josh Brolin as Ben. Oh, yes. Yes. Or as the guy in the past. Okay. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. But um, definitely Josh Brolin in there. And um, did you guys catch his work in the Amazon series? I can't remember the name. Outer Range, I think it is. I have no, not I haven't checked that out. I've been, yet, I've been meaning to watch it. It's mixed reviews. Um, go in with that in mind. I liked it personally. It gets it goes it goes far out on purpose, and I'm here for it. Like mm-hmm. it, it got a little slapsticky, and I enjoyed that. But uh, Joff, uh, Brolin kills it in it. Oh, yeah, look, um, he's fantastic in pretty everything. much everything I've seen him in. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's just even even in Men in, Men in Black was I, I think he was literally I I couldn't distinguish when he was playing a young Tommy Lee Jones between the two. Just the manner, the way that he was able to just become Tommy Lee Jones, pretty much. Was I forgot amazing. about that. That yeah, that was uh, him. Yeah. Young That's my favorite performance, even over Thanos. He's, he's him when he's playing a young Tommy Lee Jones in Men in Black Three. It's so good. It's a good choice. That's a 
Now I got to rewatch that too. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, <laughs> their movies are holding up. I watched them recently, and Men in Black, even though they were made like twenty odd years ago, they hold up. And, you oh, know, I I'm not a massive Will Smith fan anymore, but they they still hold up massively. Uh, just don't watch the 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 Chris Hemsworth one. Don't worry about that. Okay. One. <laughs> we'll see if um, Avatar 2 proves me wrong, but CGI really in the last 15, 20 years, it's leaps and bounds, sure, but it, it does, it's not a deal breaker. Like if you watch the original yeah. Independence Day, that was just before oh, that, mark, yeah. I think you're like <laughs> watching yeah. the UFOs, it <laughs> kind of yeah. takes you out of it a little bit, but um, definitely for the CGI stuff, I could see how Men in Black holds up. Oh yeah, and, and it was it was like goofy, like some of it was meant to be like, I, I yeah. after watching Wednesday, it's like Tim Burton esque, yeah, like, goofiness with the CGI. Well, so, yeah. well, it wasn't just CGI; it was uh, yeah. animatronics as well, yeah, which exactly. I love. Yeah. You know, when you do it right. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Oh, awesome. Got to. Oh, and I speaking of that, that topic, let's do the director for The Fisherman, oh, yeah. Guillermo del Toro. Yes, that would work. Yeah. That would work. And um, Ryan's got the sort of um, the. I don't want to give anything away because it's a pretty big end reveal, actually. But whatever <laughs> monster things are there would work perfectly with him, I think. Mm. Oh, definitely. 100 percent 100 percent He he is just I've started watching his new series on Netflix, The Cabinet of Curiosities, and that's just he just gets better with age, that man. Seriously. Yeah. But his mind, I don't I want to know what happened to him as a young boy <laughs> for his mind to go to those places. Oh, he, he actually he actually just lives it, man. That's just <laughs> Well, his house, um, I don't know if it was an episode of Cribs or something, but I saw the inside yeah. of his house and it's unreal in there with the way he, I couldn't walk through that and like <laughs> be normal. The, everything is ever, I think he has pumpkin head in his house too, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. He's got a lot no, of good ones. Every movie I've seen, like Pan's Labyrinth, obviously, that's one of one of the greatest movies of that genre. But yeah, even, <laughs> even, yeah, even when he did Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, like that was just, oh, that was great. his influence just, you know, with the dark elves and everything like that, I was just uh, amazing. It came out of left field with how well done that was too. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that they were going to let him spend that kind of money to no, make it I look know. that good. Yeah, yeah. And he really killed was, it with it. I'm glad they did because being that was the, you know, the final entry in in, in the Ron Perlman Hellboy. Um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that was amazing. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I keep going off topic. <laughs> no, no I, haven't gotten, I haven't gotten we're out. Good. Much well, I have a, I have a follow up for this one now. So <laughs> I have a more traditional one too. We can push in here. If we wanted to skip over the fishermen, we could use a tale of two cities. But the okay. twist okay. is, we're only allowed to cast people who are in the Avengers. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So, sorry, Henry Cavill, you're not on the list. Oh, uh, look, I think oh. we can, we, we can, in my imagination, he's all of the Avengers so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you put Superman up against the Avengers, who would win? I don't like those kind of things, but no, honestly... Well, Doctor Strange. There you go. There, there is, there is a, a Superman-level comparison, but we just haven't seen him yet, but there's rumors that he's coming of, of a guy called Hyperion from the Squadron Supreme. He's, okay. he's literally Superman level power. So he's he, they're, they're talking about bringing them in in Secret Wars that's coming up in the next few years, but okay. we'll see. But they're talking about casting Ryan Gosling as him. So, I mean, it's not really, I yeah. don't see Ryan Gosling's not an intimidating, he's a good actor, but yeah, Hyperion but is like a, a homelander from the boys kind of thing. He's brooding yeah. Gosling. Uh, my, my wife hears me talk about Ryan Gosling more than probably any human being should. And I mean, any human being, <laughs> including Ryan Gosling's mother. Um, and I agree with you. I don't think that that should, that would work out because that's not his, that's not his vibe. It's just, you need someone like when they first, uh, have you, have you seen the, have you seen the boys, Martin? Oh yeah. Love it. So when, when we first met um, the guy who plays Homelander, who's New Zealander, by the way, um, when we first saw him, because I was a massive fan of the comics, I've read them probably more times than any book I've ever read. So I was waiting for it. I'm like, let's see how it goes. And when they first uh -huh. introduced him as Homelander, I was like, okay, you you have the ability to play, you know, someone like that, someone like Hyperion, someone like, even uh, obviously the Rock's done Black Adam, but like that kind yeah. of attitude. Um, yeah. But yeah, Ryan Gosling, as I said, fantastic actor, but he just can't. He can't do that evil. He can't. I don't believe he has that evil in him. No, 
like uh, Drive, Only God Forgives. That's yeah. where he shines. Crazy Stupid Love, that yeah. works too, but oh, not definitely. Hyperion or anybody with that kind of power in a yeah. comic book movie, in a Marvel movie anyway. I thought you were going to say Captain Marvel, by the way, was going <laughs> to trump him. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to trigger Jamie because Jamie doesn't like Captain Marvel. I know. <laughs> like it's baiting you. <laughs> I, I I love Captain Marvel in the comics when 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 he says Shazam. Um, but that's, that's, <laughs> but that's a, yeah. Oh, perfect. I like there was a lot of Goku jokes about her too. Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. All right, number five, my favorite. Man, my favorite oh. person in the world, sarcastically. Um, Elon <laughs> Musk was perfected, and oh, I was like, hey, is this? Did you put do a typo? Because I, I read all of these on air. So oh. Elon Musk has perfected his electric time machine and has put you in charge of organizing a dinner party of historical figures. Who do you put on the guest list? And on you know what, for argument's sake, I'm gonna say you get five. Five, five people. Everyone says three, but I say five. Five, so I left it. I left it open. I left it open. Oh, that's fine. I'll try you, to you, figure you out. You can say the, the the entire cast of the original Fiddler on the Roof or whatever. You know, you can. That would be fun. <laughs> Speaking, it's sort of where I'm going with this because uh, the first one is going to be. Stay with me, audience. The first one's going to be Hitler. He's going to be at the dinner party. Okay, so we have to bring him in. But the reason why is we're going to surround him with incredibly strong and scary jewish people so we're gonna bring <laughs> king solomon too without any weapons hitler without weapons because oh that... yeah no bare hands <laughs> yeah well they're gonna be eating dinner so whatever is at at hand but i'm not worried what was hitler like five four? Oh yeah yeah solomon alone well we don't know what solomon looked like but i know what max bear looked like the boxer from uh and you might know him from the movie cinderella man yep Yep. He's the he's the man. He killed two guys in the ring. So he's going to be yep. another gentleman who will be there to ask Hitler some questions. Uh, well, let's do Liev Schreiber. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's he can be very scary. Oh, definitely. Do that he, one. He's my um, favorite saber tooth. Easily. Easily. I liked him at saber tooth yeah. too. Worked well. Um, Sandy Koufax. I don't know if that's five, but he was he was a tough guy too. Yeah. Pitcher, but you know. <laughs> that sounds like it's, a, it's like a revenge revenge dinner, so to speak. Oh, that's what I'm going for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's gonna get jumped. <laughs> and, and he has to eat, eat his dinner with plastic cutlery. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and they there all have go. steak knives. So we could just so, see him sitting there sweating while he's trying to cut into his veal. So are you are you gonna nab him just at the you know where he's where where he you know killed himself in that basement or wherever? What happened? Are you gonna nab him just before then? I think it'd be more fun to get him like right after that speech, you know, the famous <laughs> one we always see where he's really full of himself. He, I mean, he probably came out of there feeling like a million bucks. Ein, 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 ein. Just, <laughs> just grab him real quick around the waist. And then he's just sitting there at a table and there's four guys. And I brief him beforehand if they didn't know him from history. Cause yeah. I, I think Max bear was, was younger before yeah. uh, he was around. And then, yeah, he just, kind of what why are these angry people staring at what have i done <laughs> yeah exactly perfect <laughs> now, now in, in saying hitler would you have the taika watiti kind of hitler from Jojo <laughs> rabbit or are we going because honestly that's my favorite incarnation of hitler i don't believe i'd ever say that sentence of my favorite incarnation of hitler the slapsticky ones how about the yeah. one from inglorious bastards oh he's, yeah, yeah he's pretty good too nine 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's that, that, even though we've only asked these questions once before, I think that's that's the um, answer of the year, I think. I had to one up my last one where I, I switched <laughs> King Tut with Elvis. But these are those are intim the time travel ones are incredibly intimidating. And I hear these yeah. incredibly erudite guests that you have give these thoughtful answers. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm just not not that good at it. <laughs> Trust me, I prefer I prefer quirky and funny answers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Definitely. I would waste it. I would use it on this, hundred <laughs> percent. My answer for that question is: I would go to five different time periods in Henry Cavill's life and take <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. And so I'd have Witcher Henry Cavill. I'd have Superman Henry Cavill. I'd have um, uh, Mission Impossible villain Henry Cavill. Nice. Um, there's several different Henry, uh, Sherlock Holmes Henry Cavill or whatever. Whoever. I'd watch <laughs> You're whoever. gonna steal him from set. Of each. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, of perfect yeah so he's still in costume yeah definitely like witcher costume superman costume excellent yeah yeah there's yeah. a lot there though 
it's that'd be awesome. a brilliant scene if somebody could pull it off to see somebody at different times of their life speaking to themselves around a table and that'd be kind of interesting or themselves yeah, exactly. which mm. henry cavill would just be mm. 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 I'm just how do you like this been? check <laughs> <laughs> Right? Aren't they? Or is he out of The Witcher now? Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, it's still, you, yeah. it hasn't yet. Uh, look, I don't trust it. I call them the dirt sheets. Like it, it, it's the, the 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 media. Look, we know. Obviously, first of all, have you seen Black Adam? Not yet. I'm not gonna. I think we should end this conversation. Here. <laughs> okay. I, right. I think you've already insinuated something, anyway. So. Well, at it's the end true. of the day, he, he he will have a lot more commitments in the future. Um, I see. To play the Witcher, I would say. But at the end of the day, um, you've got um, what was who was I reading? Well, uh, David Harbour is going to be filming Stranger Things, the new Stranger Things, and something else simultaneously. Okay. And like at the same time, he's got another show. I just, it's off the top of my head, I just can't remember it. But he will be filming both simultaneously. So uh, until I hear him himself saying, I'm stepping down as The Witcher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then I will do that. All right. All right. Well, if he's, the rumors were um, already out there that he's coming back to DC to do Superman. Yeah. So I'm, I'm onto that one already. But now, okay. now I've got the sense. It's, it's kind of confirmed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, Don't worry about yeah. it, though. It's all right. The listeners yeah. might be pissed at you, though, but I'm good with it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but look, I, at the end of the day, I, he's, he's a, an amazing Superman, and yeah. I think at the end of the day, if he chooses to... Obviously, he is a really big Witcher fan, so, you know, like, there's reports of him on set saying, you know, the, 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 the script saying this, and he goes, well, actually, in book two of this, it, it actually says that. So he, he does his research, and he is a big mm-hmm. Witcher fan. So I think for him to actually give it up, it would be for something like Superman, yeah. a more permanent appearance uh, in the DCU. Now it's under James Gunn, I have a lot more faith. So Okay. Uh, I guess we'll see. We'll see. we'll see. Yeah, they let me down. I don't I don't know if we touched on this, um, but they – the um batman versus superman debacle yeah. well, that was four yeah. movies yeah. i was the kid who i stole my cousin beat the crap out of me because i stole his um death of superman comic mm-hmm. and like i took it and i knew he was going to beat the crap out of me and i took it anyway because <laughs> the cover was the coolest thing ever and i was so obsessed with doomsday and yeah. um everything and when i saw i was like all right i know what they're going to do and i really hope they don't do it and it was like 15 minutes of that entire arc ruined Mm, made me very no, sad and i even read it the dark oh no i'm thinking of the batman one um the death of superman i think is the novelization of the title yeah if you if you want to see a really good representation of the death of superman arc watch the animated movies the death of superman and the reign of the superman that is pretty much lifted straight off the pages it's amazing so uh, i only just recently uh became aware of those i didn't yeah. even know they existed and some of the batman movies that are out there too Oh yeah, the look. DC, the one thing DC gets right is their animated stuff. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Casting, animation, stories, spot on. That is yeah. one thing that I will say they do perfectly. And I, I own pretty much every single. Every time something gets released, I'll get, I'll buy it on, you know, Apple TV or I'll buy it physically. But yeah, trust me, if you love Death of Superman that much, watch those two movies. I'm pretty sure they're probably on Max, HBO Max over there. Uh, but yeah, check them out. You that will do you justice, and you'll walk away going, you know what, that is what I wanted in right. Batman v Superman. That's what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to play a little Elden Ring with some coworkers, and then I'm going to watch those movies, there or at go. least one of and them. Be right get up. And be rest assured that they don't have a parent called Martha. <laughs> yeah, Martha, 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 Martha. Martha. That should be your ringtone, right? Yeah. <laughs> But look, James Gunn says he's taking over. He's taken over now. Yeah. Fresh slate starting from his Suicide Squad movie, with obviously, which I thought was brilliant. Uh, Peacemaker was the, uh, one of the greatest shows that I've watched. I really, really enjoyed Peacemaker. Mm-hmm. Um, Black Adam was good. Um, mm-hmm. So let's just see where we go from there. You know, James Gunn, I, I have faith. Like, yeah, he, especially after his yeah. Christmas special. Oh, yeah. Have you managed to check that out yet? The, the Guardians of Galaxy. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, I just saw it on the, um, I, we use the PlayStation as our cable yep. box and um, I saw it in the background. It looked, I was like, why do they have two drunk people on a lamppost as the background for the PlayStation? 
my kids are here but um I, and then i noticed i saw the uh antennas I was like, yeah, oh. Nantes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. for about 40 minutes but it is absolutely brilliant oh, so, on, uh, really good. yeah uh so or half an hour but with 10 minutes of credits <laughs> okay <laughs> and the uh, scale is, between yeah. that and the star wars one what are we talking here oh. That's it's hard. I, don't, I can't really compare because there's so much difference time wise. That's true. That's but no, true. It, was, it was amazing. Well, we've got a mate who's very critical of everything, um, yeah. and he said he <laughs> reckons it was the best MCU release this year. Okay, well, I so, probably yeah. wouldn't argue and that. He watched, it, he watched it Friday night, and then we all watched it yesterday at this barbecue. Yeah. So okay. he watched it twice in in yeah. So it, it's great, and for for the fact that. It felt like it went for 10 minutes, but it really went for like half an hour because yeah. it's so much happened. That warms my heart that you were watching that at the barbecue instead of the World Cup. Oh, I no, that. I refuse to. Okay, that's another <laughs> podcast entirely, Mark, because I, I, remember, I normally do watch the World Cup, but I refuse yeah. to watch the World Cup at this, this year. Stage. But yes, we had this discussion yesterday before Jamie got to the barbecue. I think we talked uh, about two and a half hours. So. Ooh, okay, yeah, we won't touch that. <laughs> break no, the fourth we, wall we, we always get together we watch funny movies and uh we watch the weed out yank and big fire people it's absolutely amazing cool um and yeah it was good fun yeah you haven't seen it yet no yeah, i'm, so I'm should be writing all this down to be honest with oh, you just, but i'll listen to the episode, listen to the episode just, back. yeah <laughs> it's amazing harry potter is weird Al Yankovic. yeah oh okay <laughs> It's just it's it's. I love how Daniel Radcliffe's at the stage where he earns that much money from Harry Potter and still get the residual checks, so he can just do whatever the hell he wants now. Yeah, um, which is amazing. That's what you should do if you're in a major franchise. You should do the pictures you want to do. Yeah, not the pictures that you think people want you to do. You know, but he yeah. was amazing. I'm surprised they didn't that they didn't just write him bad contracts because they were kids. You know, yeah, I man. guess their parents were smart enough to lawyer up and make sure yeah. that they were legit. But yeah. You'd want to definitely sign up for the money. Yeah. Oh, Who was it? I would love to see his check that he gets every year from Harry Potter residuals. I, I, it's got to be a couple <laughs> minimum. My son um, gets on the laptop on Word <laughs> and just types numbers. And he's like, what's that number, daddy? And I, I'm like, that's eight octillion, <laughs> 754 septillion. So that's probably about the size of the check that he oh, gets. Just, yeah. But I'm so glad that he does. He just does what he likes. Like he's done... I don't know if you have seen Horns, the Joe Hill adaptation, uh, Stephen King's son, Joe Hill. Uh, his book Horns, Daniel Radcliffe did a movie on that. which is Oh, amazing. yes. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was a while ago. It was, yes. Yeah. And then he, he, did, um, he did an Australian surfing movie called December Boys, which was absolutely okay. amazing. He just, he does all for him. Because that's, he doesn't need the money. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, uh, sure. it makes me think of the story about Matt Damon being offered the role in um, Avatar and they yeah. were going to offer him a stake in the box office yep. and he didn't yeah. turn it down to <laughs> snub to snub James Cameron or anything, but I think he had, he was in the middle of like the born ultimatum or something. He's like, I can't yeah. do it, James, but he would have made like a oh, half a billion dollars or something yeah. stupid by now. It would have been crazy. Like everything. <laughs> Oh yeah, and he's still he's still he's still bitter about it on interviews I've seen. He's just like I sh I wish I wasn't that stupid. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's uh, why we don't see Sam Worthington doing too much lately because again, Avatar money. You oh know? yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> and you could have put anybody in there. Yeah, any exactly. one of the three of us could have been in his role. Sorry, yeah. Sam, but it's true, <laughs> and and we would have done just as fine because yeah. it was all about the big blue people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love I love how the fact I think we've just clocked 50 minutes and we haven't even started talking about your book yet. That's this happened last That's time too. I think we were like a buck, yeah. like an hour 40 in. And um, I promise, Jamie, I'm not going to make you edit an episode that's like five <laughs> hours long. I swear to God. No, that's All fine. Right, so, um, so there's an ad break yeah. coming up. So uh, let's fill this ad break with uh, Martin Kearns, Plug Your Wares. Yes. Oh, all right. Where, where can we find your books? Where can we, what's your favorite one? That you want to sell. I can tell you, I, bought, <laughs> I feel so bad, Martin, that I haven't had a chance to read your book fully yet. That I actually paid for it this morning. Yeah. Um, so I, I apologize. I've been going through some mental health stuff over the last month and a half, so I apologize. But um, I wanted to show my support because I know you sent me a review copy, and now I have paid for it as well. So I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you. Totally Thank fine. you. Um, the so you're talking about the first one or the second one? 
Plug them both. Plug them both. Plug them both. All right. So we got, we've got Beneath the Veil, which is the first book in the Valor of Valhalla series. And then we have The Sands of Akira, which is the second book in mm -hmm. the Valor of Valhalla series. They're both urban fantasy. Amazon puts them in as superhero fantasy. Yeah, cool, I guess right? the magical realism, um, all these categories I never heard of before. Um, I do share half the name of Rebecca's genre, writing genre of choice, which is paranormal, but mine's suspense. Um, oh. So it's whatever it is. It's a story with tons of mythology. There's like a supernatural detective vibe in both of the books, but uh, it only takes up a little bit of your time. There's there's an otherworldly journey going on. There's ghouls and goblins invading our world. There's a lot more horror in book one than there is in book two. Book two, unfortunately, for a few of my friends who are big horror fans, is much more thriller oriented. I know. Don't worry. No, I didn't forget bad. about you. Not I didn't so forget bad. about you. So when I decided to go this route with the second book, which... Um, wasn't really a decision so much as I don't I I outline a little but I just go and see where I'm going where it takes me um I decided I was going to do an anthology short story series well I kind of had that in my head I think by the time we did our last podcast together um and that's going to be the the terrible things that happen while these while the children of Lilith are running around because in the the Valor of Valhalla universe she's the mother of demons in Judaic mm -hmm. lore so when she gets really mad and decides to let her kids out, bad things happen to lots of people. Mm -hmm. So we're going to explore some of those because a few people that read the first one enjoyed those scenes and I didn't want to leave them high and dry. So that anthology will come out before book three and I'm hoping to get them both out by October of uh, 2023, but we'll see how that goes. And I will let our listeners know, make sure when you, you do buy the first book, I, I was not able to put it down. So do you do yourself a favor, buy it on a weekend or prepare, <laughs> give yourself some time on the weekend because, yeah, I absolutely love the first book. And uh, hence why I can't wait to get stuck. Now that things are getting better, I can't wait to get stuck into the second one. I appreciate it. I'm happy that uh, things are getting better too. I went through um, a big funk semi recently too. There might be some sort of big beam of whatever flowing down. You're in a different hemisphere, but <laughs> it yeah. might be hitting oh, us yeah. both. I couldn't it's, even read. Honestly, I, I I haven't read comics in almost a year, which is very rare for me. Mm. Um, I have I haven't been doing hardly any reading, so I'm just coming out of it now, which is good. Things are getting better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm I still like I there's so many books I've pre-ordered that I've got that I haven't even read yet, and I feel that's why I, I feel I yeah. that's not me. So yeah, that's why I thought you know what I'm jumping on because I love your first book. I bought I bought myself a. Uh, hard copy which i'm waiting on oh, to come nice. on amazon and i've got the digital copy through google play which our aussie guys you can get it through google play as well as amazon i just found that out the other day um you can download it there i think it's about eight bucks so yeah, yeah and we're trying to keep the prices similar but they all mess around i use um draft to digital and they're pretty good but every retailer will switch things up when they want to yeah. um amazon's been pretty consistent at keeping the first book under 10 Sometimes they inflate up. It's bizarre to me um, having mm -hmm. to mess with it. But um, I had the first book on sale for a while through some promotions. Now the Kindle's at three ninety nine, mm -hmm. paperbacks at nine ninety nine, and I had planned to set the hardcover out by now. But since we're changing the cover, um, we're doing a new set of covers for the series. Um, the hardcover should be out sometime in a week, I'd say. Cool. So. I can pay you the week then, Martin, because there we go. The, the <laughs> there we go. Again, so it's all good. Well, don't buy the hardcover. If you already bought a, a hard copy, I can. I'll. I'll personalize a hardcover and mail it to you. But oh, okay. it's the you least I can do. You guys yeah, are nice. It's, it's a fantastic book, and you, you're right. Uh, our horror fans out there, because everyone knows on the listeners that I'm a massive, massive horror fan. You will not be disappointed um so yeah 100 percent. it's just it's i love the combination i i call it fantasy horror to be honest with you yeah like, but everyone makes up their own genre but I it was it's like i'm a massive uh, as i said we used to do D, am a massive fantasy nerd i'm a massive horror nerd and you've just put my favorite things together so i can't say enough good things about the first book so. yeah, i appreciate uh, that review right definitely definitely 
And, and I will, if I'm feeling better, I will put that to paper. <laughs> no, but it's because oh, I, I, I don't I don't know how many horror movies or books out there. Like, because the f- fantasy genre is like the perfect place to have horror. Like, you got all yeah. these creatures and you know yeah. goblins and like it, there's so much you can do with it. Yeah, definitely. There's not that much fantasy horror out there. That good, I will say, good yeah. fantasy horror because. There are some out there that I've read and I thought, you know yeah. what? I don't like to say bad things. It, yeah. it could use work, but mm. there's very few people that do good fantasy horror and Martin yeah. is among the elite of those. So definitely. Mm. Make sure you plug, plug, I plug. So, I do appreciate that, sir. Um, well, you guys want to take a look at the at yeah. the new cover and see if you like it or hate it. Yes. Yeah. And be, be truthful. Yep. I will not. I will not. Um, <laughs> take it personally am i allowed to share screen go go for it um, right, i don't see. know i have to do anything on my end or it's um, on his end okay. host disabled participant screen sharing so you have to yeah, go over to my name and allow me to do it um and while you're messing with that jamie so uh a chap named todd keesling um who's a very good horror writer he wrote his most recent books non-entity it's the third book in the monochrome trilogy okay. um he wrote the final um revelation the and that's got like an homage to the yellow kings mythos as well which is really cool if you're a lovecraft fan um devil's creek gives you that that sort of salem's lot small town vibe with the the creature scare and the evil preacher like it's it's all there um what he's a great author again, Martin? sorry i'll just todd uh todd keesling key yeah. uh key k-e-i-s-l-i-n oh, i've got him here yeah because you do uh, me every time we talk so um which is great because oh yeah i can see i've got his books and i probably will be spending some money on that when i get paid he's so. good he's so good i bought his merch i use i wear his shirts oh, wow. around all the time too he's he's a good dude and then i found out he did his um he did book formatting and stuff on the side so i reached out to him he oh. formatted both books um and then i had maurice Mosqua, who i can't rave about enough because i love this cover i really do love these covers um but they do scream high fantasy which it, people think tolkien they don't buy or they they want tolkien and they buy my book and ryan can tell you that's not tolkien <laughs> no, <definitely not>. yeah, <laughs> i can't find it says allow to multi-pin allow to record local files i can make you a host would that help that would help Do that. Do that. that should work oh hang on because then it's going to swap you to me me to you or whatever i think i must oh, be yeah. then i'll have control right? and my plan will be complete well, I, I, you know, I, I hopefully this won't screw up the recording. <laughs> oh, it might actually. Yeah. Um, let me no, think. it doesn't look. It should be all right. No, I could always just email it to you too. Why don't I just do that? Yeah. All right. Well, all right. I'll make you a host. All right. So you're all set. Boom. All right. There we go. The, the listeners just missed a, <laughs> a comedy of errors. That was great. <laughs> Um, let me no, see. This better it work. <laughs> it better work indeed. See, the fun part is the um I don't want to share everything. So I'm <laughs> trying to get it to open up the exact thing I want. That's what kind of podcast we are. We like to share everything. We everything. <laughs> Zip. <laughs> it's not showing me the program where the image is open. So I hope I'm not doxing. Oh, here myself. We go. oh, here we go. Uh, Got it. So, oh. There it is. So we're you're getting a little bit, a little bit. Let me see if I can open it though. Oh, I, look, I'm a ma- I'm loving the angel wings. All right. Oh, uh, you know what? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Send me yeah. a copy of that. Okay. Yeah. So it's got the the Kirkus review quote in it. I mean, Todd's just brilliant, and that's actually the bridge that falls in the book. Yeah. Spoiler Wait, alert: it's first thirteen out? pages. Yeah um that is already on the kindle copy um we're just waiting he's gonna do me a solid because like i say super nice guy um he's not charging me any extra just to have the image inlaid on the inside so that um the hard copies will have that when you open the cover you'll see the black and white version um but what you gentlemen should see the back of it is what i really like um uh, that's the ebook i don't want that all right you can see it there is it is it big oh, enough wow. 
Yeah, see. that's so you can kind of see through the flames on that image there. Yeah. Yep. The outline of him. Yeah. And uh, he just does such a great job. Well, honestly, like it, it to, as someone who's read the first book, this feels more like the first book. Yeah. That's that's my thing, and, and that uh, yeah. As I said, that will make me buy another one, which is fine because I looks that would look so much better on my shelf. So, you know, and I'll have them both side by side because I'm a massive <laughs> yeah. angels and demons kind of guy. Like, yeah, all of our DD campaigns, I used to have that duality clause, like you know, the light and the darkness. So to me, that right. that could be all all the way. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that looks really good. He done a really good job. He's brilliant. And um, I prepaid for the second one. So he's going to start working on the second one. He's a busy guy. So I just told him, take your time. It's not like there's a rush on anything. Um, so swap them out. And it's just to get more moved. Um, it's sold. I, we just surpassed 2000 from one and two recently. But some of that's 99 cent sales. I got lucky yeah. enough to be um, not Robin Reed's. What's the big one? Book Bub. Uh, yep, yeah. yep, yep. I got lucky enough to have a Book Bub ad. So that shot out, you know, that shot up the numbers quite a bit, yeah. but moving some copies. And I think the, the new cover will help out a little bit more because I have a lot of faith in the story. I like the story. Oh, no, it's, as I said, I, I enjoyed the on the vow so much. It's just, it's my, it's my kind of thing. It's just, it's, it's hard to say lots without spoiling, but it's, it, if you, as I said, <laughs> if you love fantasy, you love your horror, just jump on and get a band. Like it's, it's, it will be the best. Even if you, even if you pay top price, it'll be the best $10 you spend. spent. Um, just do, just do yourself a favor. Look, if I'm, I'll go as far as I'll quit this podcast. If you do not. <laughs> no, I'm, seriously, I, I, I'm not, I'm a part of my friend. I'm, I'm not a bullshitter. If mm. I don't like your book, I will not plug it. I'll, I'll, I'll say, look, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, but I won't plug it as much as I plug this. So it's just, I appreciate that. Thank you. No, I really honestly wish I could say more about the second book but i will be able to the next time we have you on before the anthology series comes out which i want there now go. so <laughs> there we go that one will definitely come to you first i'll oh, send yeah. that your way before it gets published oh. that'll be fun i've got um still three of the stories written stories that i can see like formulating in my head already so, yeah. <laughs> oh it's fun right what if you um behind me tremblay wrote yeah. um uh survivor song Yep. And that was like the the rabies zombie sort of story right when the pandemic hit and everything. And mm -hmm. you sort of see it. And that sort of let, made that hit home more, that whole concept of like things coming home and stuff. So like, where are you? Um, we had a little, little tiny earthquake when I worked in an office building down near the city. And I was on the 12th floor, you know, and yeah. the building starts rocking. Yeah. And I was like, this is the worst possible place I could be right now in New York <laughs> State anyway. <laughs> Because I'm in a and I'm in a building that's shaking. So like, where are you when it hits the fan, sort of thing? And I just yeah. love that. Oh, that idea. No, definitely. All right, now yeah. now that we we plugged, we plugged, we plugged, we talked about beneath the veil. <laughs> let's give our listeners an insight into the new book. So, again, we will let you take it away, Martin. Give us give us the process. Give us the you know the, where we're picking up from and and tell us everything you think the readers need to know to buy this book. Sure. Um, the second book, first off, is paced. People say the first book is paced really fast. Um, and the second one's paced a little bit faster, I'd say. It's just very action oriented. You don't have to get to know anybody. You already know the deal if you're picking up book two. So it just gets right to business. Um, and it doesn't skimp on the on the pantheon. We have yeah. some, you know, we touch on some Egyptian gods. We have some of the old favorites who come back. Um, Freya will definitely be making an appearance. I think we start out with, um, after the prologue, we start out with some yep. and we get to know him a little bit better as well. And just kind of continue to go through and try to figure out where after the punch in the gut ending of the first book, which mm -hmm. isn't too much of a spoiler, um, where our little protagonist is heading, where David's mind is. And that's, you know, we ended the first book with him heading kind of over to get some answers. Yeah. So that's, that's the, the first act of book two, and it brings you into what, what our little group gets themselves into. Um, there is actually a funny, a funny thing that inspired me to a big part of book two, which is a company called All Century. Um, I went, I was trying to watch like the Blood Moon 
rise yep. um, with my son. And he was little. At the, well, he's still little. He's only four. But um, he was littler. And mm -hmm. I brought him out to this place. Um, I looked on Google Maps, like at the topography and tried to find the highest place I could drive to. And I drove into this place. And the first thing that got me that struck me as off was this uh, sign that said an all American community. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I feel like I'm being welcomed into something. I feel like there's a trap in here. And I drove in and there's all these ticky tacky sort of condos everywhere and stuff like that. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then I noticed they have their own school daycare there's two cool. restaurants on grounds and the the business facility which i believe is for medical something medical um is in the back behind this huge security kiosk mm. so i was looking at this i was like you don't have to leave this little compound ever and the people are Although, jogging medical, what's that yeah, medical medical it sounds a little bit resident <laughs> evil to me but the yeah I, first thing I thought of was umbrella too. I couldn't use that in the book or it gets sued probably. But uh, first thing I thought of was umbrella. So I was thinking about like, you know, that angle sort of would, wouldn't leave my mind and it leached into the story. And I just, I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. Make this place weird. And um, ended up with that in there as well. But it's the, the cast of characters continuing the story. Um, book one really doesn't end with much satisfaction, I guess. Um, I mean, but depending on what you're, what you're looking for in a story, I know, I mean, you can probably figure out where book two is going at yeah, the end of book one, but you know, some pretty heavy things happened, some characters, yeah. some things happened to characters that made some readers upset. And I was like, well, them's the haps. <laughs> as, as, as a horror fan, it, 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 I'm, I'm used to being, I'm, I'm immune to that now. So yeah without spoiling anything things can happen and i understand why they happen because they need to move the story forward but right yeah i don't have that i know like if, for example if my 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 best friend steph who i live with if she read it mm -hmm. she would probably be like oh. whereas i'm kind of like <laughs> yeah. this is my but wife reading um, you proof. Care about them, love. well that's the goal and they, if you did if you gave a crap about any of them then i did my job that's the hardest thing as a writer i think i don't know jamie um if if you're of the same mindset but making people care about the characters is job number one right oh yeah yeah um so the whole idea with them was to well the my problem was i ended up making you know i have two two main characters mm -hmm. and beneath the veil and david i wasn't nearly as excited about writing david's stuff as i was roses okay. after about 80 82 printed pages into it i'd say mm -hmm. like the 20,000 word mark. I just kept going back over there. I was like, yay. And messing <laughs> with her, she, she just turned into a much cooler character for me. Um, stronger too, which was interesting. And just, I ran with that. So it's fun. I think the second book's gonna do the, do a lot of the things the first one did. Like I said, right away though, there's not much, there's one scene you could consider horror stakes are pretty low in it though. Um, it's more fantasy driven in this one. Um, a lot of things happen in succession as well, but book three is probably going to get a little spookier again. And the anthology is going to be straight horror. I'm just writing a horror anthology set in this cool. universe. So, Ryan is grinning hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Good point. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of horror lately and I'm just, I'm finding a lot's lacking. So um, you know, I remember I, I was actually thinking, you know what, before I give the second book another go, I want to go back and read Beneath the Veil again. That was oh, cool. When you, I bought the copy online um, because I, I remember, like, I'm a very harsh judge of horror. Like, <laughs> ask anyone, I'm very, very harsh. And and especially when it comes to the written word, because this, it, uh, and this is a credit to you, Martin, it takes so much more to do horror in the written word than it does mm -hmm. on the screen because you can just put on the screen a bunch of jump scares and a lot of people getting slashed and hacked but to actually put it into words and have to have the reader make the images in their head is a, yeah what i would be a billion times harder and you've honestly done it amazingly because there was parts in it where i just had to stop and go well that was awesome you know and yeah it's towing the line right there is the hardest part too to not screw that up where so i use a lot of imagery i try to make that picture really vivid and yeah. my one of my um co-workers is he's a, very similar to you so i take his word first of all he, he was first thing he said was i like the first book better 
<laughs> <laughs> and that's how you know you can trust somebody, right? But he missed the horror. He wanted it to stay darker in those certain scenes. Yeah. Um, and I was like, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and But there's tons of stuff he loved in the second book as well. But it's that try not to overdo or overwrite that stuff is a fine line. So and the second book, I think, is um, a smoother read okay. is the way I'll put it. Yeah. the way I'll put it and it just flows through a little bit faster my opinion so I'm glad that that's your take though Ryan that's yeah. that's a win for me there are some scenes in 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 beneath the veil where like I just I could just see it playing in my head and it was I was just you know what I did with the with beneath the veil is I tried to read it at night when I could uh mm -hmm. so I have a, a really nice recliner so I would just literally nice. wait until Steph went to bed so I'm in the room by myself, turn the lights off. I've got a, you know, a, a bottle of water there ready to go. And I just turn everything else off. I even, because I, I don't know if I've mentioned it, I'm deaf. So I wear hearing aids. I will turn them off. So I hear nothing, absolutely nothing. And then just read. And I found that that was, I almost wanted to have a little candle on my table beside me to get the full Lovecraft here. <laughs> kind of, that would have been cool. There was times where I had to just put the iPad down and go, mm -hmm. that was amazing. And that's how he got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> no, Everything, the TV, the DVDs, it's all done. There's, there's very few authors, and, and, you know, I know you'll appreciate, but like Joe Hill is yeah. one that I can do the same thing. I, he just amazes me with his ability to describe these things mm -hmm. and, and to actually put a bit of fear into you, whether you're not even seeing them, you're playing the images out in your mind. And mm -hmm. there's very few writers like that. So, I mean, yeah, kudos to you because uh, the the only other writers that I read that have done that have been Joe Hill and Stephen King. So, yeah, in That's my opinion, high high praise. I'm gonna and, keep and that on the shelf for later. Shoots, I've read like a, a a lot of stuff, but yeah, honestly, it's it's it, it is one of those books, and that's what I love about it. So, I have a very big recommendation for you if you like that imagery. Um, Ballen Grud, he wrote It's North American Lake Monsters is his first oh, series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but he's got one wounds. It's right behind me. He wrote a book called or a story in it called The Visible Filth. And just the imagine, filth. yeah, the visible filth. I mean, that that title alone just kind of gets you going. Oh, definitely. That's, sets the tone, right? Um, he it's just one of the best written horror short stories I've ever read. It's almost novella length, but it's just shy. Um, it's like maybe an hour. Cool and a half read and that you said that was by is that the one by nathan ballen group group ballen grud yeah he's um he needs to be talked out about way more he is phenomenally talented and um just i mean he I think he just came out with a sci-fi now i love him even more he's coming out with a sci-fi novel next um but he yeah i mean he would post on twitter that he was taking you know he was terrified of switching his style or doing something yeah. different i was like just mm. do it man you're going to kill anything you do, but uh, he's phenomenal. Yeah. See, that's what I love about our conversations. When we talk, I, I literally have my Amazon window open. <laughs> and I'm just typing in, okay. So who's this by? What's his title? And I just do that. So, because as I said, it, it, it's good. I feel like our, uh, even just judging by your shelf behind you, um, mm -hmm. it, our reading styles are very similar. So oh, yeah. it's very few people actually like horror writing. Um, yeah. A lot of people claim to, but very few people actually enjoy it and 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 like it. And what I liked about that when I did a search for the visible filth, I always know the book's going to be good if in Google it says the visible filth ending explained, which means it's a mind. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'm oh, definitely yeah. going to get. And if you like that. angels too, it's yep. going to uh, Chef's Kiss. You're going to love it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you, the only other one is Gamma Files that I can think that could um that stands toe to toe with ball and Grud right now as okay. what the, for what they're putting out her most recent anthology since i plugged um not like any of these people are paying me or giving me quotes <laughs> for my covers but exactly. she's so good um it was spectral evidence i think is okay. the one she just came out with i even have a little tag in here which means she did something that knocked me on my ass okay. when i was reading it um she's just so good and um her short stories too are just second and none and what so was the I name of that book man sorry that one is spectral evidence i'm not sure if that's the one it's in she's got one in the um 
the Datlow anthology, the best horror of the year for last year. I think it's called oh, Big yeah, Wet. Yeah, yeah. Big Wet Grin is the name of the story that I'm thinking about, oh, though. Yeah, Gemma Finals. Yeah, I've got there, there's one, The Worm in Every Heart, too. So Ooh, I was she's just so good. Yeah. She's just okay. so good. And she um this one takes place in that like immediately you get the Silent Hill vibe. It takes place wow. in a nursing home. And the main character is a, a CNA or a nurse. And it's just, you're like, oh, man, it's cool. And it's fun. I feel, I feel this, this interview is, is not <laughs> fair because we're not talking enough about your books. You're just giving me recommendations. It's- no, we're, we're talking about his influences, all right? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, they nail me. And then the influences come from everywhere. So, you, I mean, watching Good Omens and things oh, like that, yeah, thinking yeah, about I, Terry I Pratchett. That. It's great. Anything yeah. that they game in and Pratchett, you put their names on yeah. it. How could I hate? I think I'd have to be inherently evil to dislike it. I mean, <laughs> they're so good. Yeah. Um, Pratchett in the, the world's a better place because of Terry Pratchett, in my opinion. Um, but it's just phenomenal. Just like everything you watch and you want to, you want to kind of, I don't know, use everything. Yeah. when you're right i guess that's why beneath the veil turned out the way it did instead of going straight horror which is what i was going to do when i first started writing it um so yeah the influences are everywhere but i almost exclusively read horror so <laughs> it's a little tough it's, i watch it's a lot of fantasy like i always find myself like it's, it's amazing when we talk well i get i find so many new authors because i am one of those creatures of habit i will go back to joe hill i will go back to stephen king dead coots and i because that's what i grew up on and yeah, i feel the the you know the the ability to read a, a thousand page book by Stephen King it's just yeah. it's it flows so easily. That's I'm reading fairy tale right now, 160 pages in. Literally, I mean a lot happens, but Jamie, I don't know if you've read it yet. Fairy tale, no. nothing happens in the first mm-hmm. 160 pages. In mm-hmm. on any other writer would have crushed through that in 25, worried about yeah. losing the reader. Yeah. And, Stephen King is like I can put my name on the phone book and yeah. people will buy it. He yep. can do, he's quite <laughs> the Daniel Radcliffe, you know, he can, he can do what, how he can write how he wants to write and dedicated fans like myself and you will still read it and we will still love it. And well, I, I don't mean to come off the wrong way with that either. It, the 160 pages are good because it's, yeah, some, yeah. he somehow makes it good. <laughs> it's, it's not boring. You're like this kid, he's watching somebody's dog. What's, and, and you're just going through the motions <laughs> of a, of a, a year with a high school kid. Gonna, it's always going to come back. And it's yeah. always going to be, you know, like my favorite Stephen King is The Stand. And that book is, I think, 15, 1600 pages. And, yeah. um, you know, the the adaptations have been great, but they definitely do not do the book justice at all because of the world that he creates within those 1,000, 1500 pages. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's, it's worth the commitment. They haven't figured out how to do The Dark Tower yet either. And that's, uh, that's oh, I don't. Well. don't I'm a massive Idris Elba fan, but I just, I can't, I don't like that movie at all. We touched on this the last time we, yeah. uh, we spoke to it's, <laughs> it, it is what it is. It wasn't just that it was everything. They, yeah. cr- they crushed um, probably 35,000 pages of written word into a short movie. Yeah. It didn't even, um, it didn't even clock in at two hours. I don't think it was, it was no. under two hours. And I thought, oh, as soon as I heard that, I thought I'm really not going to like this movie. I'm surprised McConaughey, maybe he needed the money. I don't know. I'm surprised he did it, to be honest with you. I love Matthew McConaughey, too. I shouldn't have said that, but oh, no. <laughs> but um, uh, it, could been, it could have been the, hey, I need a bit of money. You know what I mean? Here's the kick in this pants, though. Um, speaking of money, Rings of Power, Amazon was going to do it. it was going to do that extended, long series, dump hundreds of millions of dollars into the Dark Tower series. I was losing my mind. Oh, really? And then... In order to get Rings of Power, I forgot who had the who had the licensing for it first. Amazon had to agree to five seasons, yeah, and they yeah, just had to yeah. allocate that funding over there and said we, we can't do the Dark Tower anymore. Yeah. Was- See, I enjoyed Rings of Power. Um, I did. I only watched it while I've been off for these last couple of weeks. Um, mm-hmm. But I would have much like being a horror fan to see something like the Dark Tower in that scope would have oh, worked yeah. perfectly just the first book in a 10 episode well the first book actually they should probably do the first two books in the first season yep. because the first book shouldn't be that long um but my wife can't get through i re- i talk about the dark tower series all the time she can't get through the gunslinger a lot of readers can't um and there's some similar criticism in beneath the veil because even the kirkus review i laughed so hard at this where at one point the reviewer who does write a really nice review of the book which you don't always get with kirkus is nice mm-hmm. um 
He's like, and then there's David who's going for a hike in the other world <laughs> at one point. Cause there is a long, I mean, Ryan read it. Yeah. There's a little bit of a long walk, but I mean, it, read the Lord of the Rings trilogy. There's a lot of walking in that too. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you a lot get of somewhere. <laughs> so and things happen on the walk. It's not just a hike, but I like that. He's in a hike in the other world or the afterlife. Um, it's, uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't definitely not use that to describe them. <laughs> Don't put that on the back cover, please. Please. Don't yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a like Jamie recommendation. Jamie. <laughs> there you go. Oh, no. Okay, um, so where, now tell everyone, I know we briefly touched on it, but tell everyone where, how, where, where every possible way they can get that. Obviously, we've touched on the new covers and when they're, obviously, the, the second book, the new covers are while, are while off, but tell everyone where you can get it. They should both be swapped by the new year. Um, you can get it on Amazon, Google Play, Apple, um, everywhere drafted digital lens books out, except for Hoopla. For some reason, they weren't, they, they didn't list it um, and they didn't tell me why. So thanks, Hoopla, <laughs> for that. <laughs> but um, uh, you can get it through normal library acquisition. I do have it in some libraries. That's the hardest part um, is getting the book into the library. Yeah. But you can get it anywhere. Um, you need to buy it. You have to, or Krampus is going to come for christmas and ruin your whole your whole holiday so buy it <laughs> review it um and you'll be happy and yeah that'll be that and i agree based <laughs> on the reading of the first book and the, the the initial second book starting you will be very happy it'll be a great christmas present for for um you know for the fantasy uh, i as you say the second the, the first one was leaning a lot on horror but why not just if you don't have them why not just buy both because let's face it you can't read the second one without reading the first one yeah. well yeah that's a good point and no, the horror parts are are too well, graphic great writer so please buy the books <laughs> so have you got um uh and a you know uh, an ending in sight for the series like do you know how many books you're going to do um it's a great question um book three turned into books uh it got eaten by book two even though mm. it's a little bit shorter mm. uh, a lot of the stuff i had planned for the ending of the series ended up getting cannibalized by the second book and then a few ideas came to mind about where the series was going and i decided that maybe that wasn't such a bad thing um mm. so i had to decide on either two books or five maybe four or five books so that's where i think we're going right now probably four is the idea but it might be five as well just depends on a couple of things a few new characters get introduced there's a few more a few more uh baddies ryan that are oh, hiding I around see. there that you might not have anticipated they're going to crop up okay. and so we're going to see you know what's going on with our friend lilith in this second one as well i think yeah, you're going to like the way it ends trying to get me to not watch survivor series and read his book this afternoon by- <laughs> <laughs> no we'll watch survivor series <laughs> read the book tomorrow after <laughs> No, no, I, 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 one question I do have, and I apologize, this is not on the list, but okay, let's say um, you get a call uh, January 1st, mm. um, Beneath the Veil to be optioned into a TV series. So that's the, obviously to continue on with the, 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 the future books. Who would you cast as your two protagonists, David and Rose? So impossible. Not the guy on the cover. Um we had we have the guy on like my wife said then todd if you if you ever hear this this is not a slight to your work i know that the <laughs> photo is barely anything to do with you i actually chose the photo um but my wife said i love it it's amazing but i want to punch david in the face <laughs> she saw so she sees a totally different person when she reads david dolan than that um but so in, on the cover, he's got dark hair. I always had him in, in mind. Well, he's sort of a pseudo mirror image of me. So mm-hmm. I guess I'd have him, but nothing like me in the book. Um, you know, dirty blonde, um, something like that. So a, a younger actor who fits that bill, because they're all like 35. Yeah, we could, we could do say by the bell and cast like a 40 year old, right? <laughs> or no, that was 90210. That was 90210. Um, who's a younger Ryan Gosling? <laughs> and we can cast you know what why don't we do ryan gosling and then we can put cavill in as asmodeus <laughs> you've won me there so done, 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 and done. there it is so what about, like honestly would you like when i i because i'm i'm one of those guys who, like i read it and i i i will hear an actor's voice sometimes uh-huh. now 
how would you feel about Tom Holland? Oh, he's brilliant. I didn't even, I, th- I, well, first of all, we're going to have to, so there was a uh, uh, paper interview I did a while ago and they asked a question similar to this and I did put Tom Holland and then struck him immediately because there's no way we could afford him. No, um, yeah, you got on, <laughs> you got Amazon money. You've yeah, got Amazon, Amazon money. money. Tom Holland be the perfect pick yeah. um, because and that's, he, I, that's, I read yeah. His voice. He's American accent voice. I will read. Yep. Um, like his Spider-Man voice, I should say. I, I read it and I can hear that. And he has that sort of um, lack of understanding of consequences, yeah. at, le- at least up through that Tom Holland conveyed very well as Spider-Man, um, I think. So that's a great pick. Um, think, and and then, he's still at that age. Of, obviously, it's that journey as well. Uh-huh. So I, I would still use him in the second. Like, it's let's say they adapted the first book in the first season, the second book in the second season. Bring him on, but he would be a much hardened much more hardened Tom Holland as yeah. David after, after everything that he goes through in the first book. He'd be Tom Holland after Stony, uh, Tony Stark ate it. <laughs> a little bit, yes. little bit rougher around yeah. the edges, yeah. A little bit more free with the punches. Yes. Um, and then Rose is a tough one because she's, she's supposed to be um, exactly what her name implies, something beautiful and somewhat frail looking, but with thorns. And it's difficult to get that. But I think um, Chloe Grace Moretz, yep. who played Ooh. Hit Girl, I yep. think she nails that down perfectly. And she would steal the show from Tom Holland, which is good because that's what happened in the book. And, and obviously, <laughs> like uh, her, a lot of people don't like her, but I really liked her in Carrie, the remake of Carrie. Um, yeah. Stephen King, like she had that. I could see her like I, she's she's nice and sweet and innocent when she needs to be, but then as you say, the thorns come out. The thorns come out. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it's, I think that's really good. Sorry to put you on the spot there. But no, I please just, do. I, I love that stuff. <laughs> um, I couldn't think of her name though. So if you ever listen to this, Chloe, apologies. I couldn't think of her name on the spot, so I did have to Google that. But she's um she's in the peripheral right now too, and she's doing a good job in that as yeah, well. They give her this weird you. accent though, no, which really. is a bit annoying. Yeah. I, I've, I've heard good things about that. I haven't yet to start it. Um, I just because I'm kind of in the horrors. I'm from 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 the beginning of October till usually around about Christmas Day, I'm in the horrors horror zone. So uh-huh. is, is it good? Is it worth checking out? Is worth checking out. Absolutely. Okay. Um, it, even the premise alone is pretty neat. Just sort of dystopian future. Yeah. Things aren't going great, but the video games are elite. Yeah. They're amazing. You sit back in the recliner <laughs> and you're in the game, baby. So I've been, I've been kind of holding off as well because I'm a massive fan of Ready Player One. And yeah. I've kind of thought maybe it's got those kind of vibes to it. So I've kind of been holding off watching it. But like, it's I'll right say- there. It's right there, but it's darker. It's its own thing as far as those two things are concerned, I'd say. So that's good. Um, Ready Player One was a nice surprise for how well they did the film adaptation. The book's that, phenomenal. But... Did really well with. Yeah. I was very, very impressed. Even though I hate Miles Teller, I cannot mm. stand him. Mm. He was actually really good in as a lead. I just I hate him. I, I, there's, mm-hmm. there's two actors that I hate and that I would, I almost refuse to watch anything that they're in, and that's Miles Teller. And um, I'm not going to remember her. Uh, the, the girl that played um, Sue Storm in that really bad Fantastic Four movie. Oh, um, Kate Mara. Yeah, I know. I know. Is that is that her? Yeah, Kate Mara. Yeah, that's all. Like Kate Mara. I went I to high see. school with her, dude. Uh, oh, man, <laughs> next time you see her, she ruined Fantastic Four. She doesn't time. know who I am. She had Mara money. I went to um <laughs> high school with her, and she her younger sister um is a is a far better actress, in my opinion. Um, Rooney Mara. Um, she her first name's Trish. Sorry if I if I doxed you there, Trish. But um, she was much more approachable and easy to talk to. But Kate was uh Kate was a great above. They're both super nice people. We used to oh, go to the same well. Christmas Eve mass, and they'd be there. Look, it's the Maras. I'm like, yeah, at homeroom with them. It's fine. They're people. But yeah, um, shooter, same same thing, Ryan. Shooter and stuff. She's never gonna hear this. Doesn't matter. <laughs> She's not gonna listen to comic book stuff. I'm sure she's lovely. I'm sure Miles Teller's a lovely person, but I just, I can, I cannot stand, as I said, Ready Player One was almost ruined because of him. I got through it because it was such a good story. I, I can't, I can't. I'm sorry. Oh, listen, I'm to sorry, the viewers, Miles. I mean, to the viewers, the listeners, we're not coming at this from a personal standpoint. This is about the artwork. Yes. So mm-hmm. Kate okay. shouldn't feel bad that she just shouldn't have been in that movie to begin with. And there's a few people that shouldn't have been in that movie. Terrible actress. 
Well, she's it's like a terrible actor. Yeah. It's like Ed Sheeran. I can't, I can't stand his music, but I'm sure I'd get along with him if we yeah. hung out. You know, hundred percent, hundred. Oh, he's such a nice guy. Uh, I think Kim Kim says that his mother must have wished, 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 like, or um, what? How does she say it? Something along the lines of, like, his mother must be so excited that he's such a good person he can get laid, <laughs> despite <laughs> the way he looks. <laughs> I was like, damn. That's my wife. Wow. But uh, yeah, I think that's she's being harsher than we are. Like Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we want Ed Sheeran on our ass, he's probably got a cartel. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Well, I, I I am should, very I happy. Should, I should Sorry. have said I should have said James Blunt because oh. he has he has a sense of humor. <laughs> I still love that Jeez. joke that I always tell that I went to Big Day Out, Martin, which is a massive music festival over here when I was younger. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, the, the guy came out to announce the band. He said, ladies and gentlemen, Tool. And James Blunt worked out, walked out. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good joke. Yeah, I, 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 that's my go-to. I always use that. I try to try and remember who has heard it and who hasn't. So, yeah. but yeah. Oh, that's but, new to I, me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. God, <laughs> James Blunt catching some flack. No, and then look, I'm, as I said, I'm sure he's a lovely guy. He was in the what the Bosnian army, he's Bosnian Black Ops or something. Yeah. Uh, he was, he was a tank army. commander or something. Yeah, um, yeah. So he could probably kill me in 75 different ways, but um, oh yeah, uh, only if he has a tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, well, Martin, thank you very, very much for taking a very long time again, which I was fully expecting. <laughs> No, uh, chat with us. I really appreciate it. We we only need to go another ten minutes to beat the record for the last oh, one. You know what? Let's but, talk for ten minutes. <laughs> the last one was over. This no, no, the, no. Your I mean, no. One. This one should be close to that one, right? We were like La- an hour short. A lot. No, last one was an hour forty. Oh, so this I is was... an, hour, an hour and a half so far. <laughs> and now, and now this is fine. All right, I'll shut up. It's All been right, great, um... gentlemen. <laughs> no, Randall. Cool. Um, just in case there's any you know fellow writers listening uh what what like what do you use to write like like is there a software you use that you go to to write your um i i know a lot of people are moving to atticus i was really excited about using atticus as well Mm -hmm. um it's got there's a a disc i've sent their customer support this thing there's a disc that every time it auto saves which is like 14 times a second (laughs) <laughs> it blinks in the top right corner of the screen and that alone was enough to pull me out so i stick to scrivener cool. um which is it's not terribly expensive i think the the updated price is 60 bucks it's a lifetime license for the edition yeah. um you can you can parcel out everything in chapters and sections it's yeah. great for short th- uh short story anthologies too okay. for that reason so cool. i go to that and then what happened with the first book was i sent it out to editors and they sent me back MS Word, and I didn't want to stop using Scrivener, so I did edits on both, and then I had to, yeah, it was a nightmare. So now I just, mm-hmm. once the Word copy comes back, that's the one I use. Cool. I, I, those programs mean nothing to me, unfortunately. Yeah. I, 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 everything I write, which is not much, is just done on Word. I didn't realize there was specialized, you know, author software out there. Oh, it's yeah, there's, 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 there's a few. Okay. Yeah. Atticus is really cool not to plug them but Atticus is cool because you can just do your whole ebook on it um yeah. but there are people out there that can do such a better job like Todd um yeah. with formatting and stuff like that yeah. that it's a no-brainer for me to spend the money on that to be honest yeah. um but yeah Scrivener's great Atticus is great Word is great my friend Steve um who's gonna be a phenomenal writer he's put pump like pushing out these great concept ideas now, short stories now, yeah. um, is he works on Google Docs. Wow. And yeah. yeah, so yeah. whatever your medium is. Yeah, I, I'm finding I, I gotta I gotta mix it up now because like I, I have I'm on Mac. I use everything on Mac. Uh-huh. And I uh, just um the my book publisher got in contact with the other day and he goes, oh we need them in the different so it turns out that the publisher works on you know PC and I work on Mac. So it's I gotta, you know You've got to it's, switch it out to doc. I've got, I got to format. switch it out and uh, it's a nightmare. So it's like, I'm, you know, starting to put the feels out to, you know, so I picked up a cheap PC, um, okay. which, which I'll just use for writing. So I'm going to, you know, pick, that's uh, perfect too. Pick out, it's pick like out air gapped. Yeah. Yeah. You just yeah, kind of laser it, vision. Cause it's a nightmare. It, it's a nightmare. I've been spending the it last is. week, week trying to you know fix things up. 
Oh yeah. And then Ryan, yeah. when you, um, when you'll switch it over, like Jamie, will have to switch it over from whatever the Mac format is to DocX, which is what word is. It'll automatically screw up all your margins, all oh, your spacing, yeah. like everything will get screwed up. They won't have the same yeah. fonts anymore. Yeah. It's the worst. So yeah. it's, it's amazing. You may as well just write it on yeah. Word or yeah. whatever program you use. It's it's essentially, I had to copy and paste and straight oh, over, you know. And it's worse because the you know the book I wrote, Letters from the Emu War, it's all um, letters, you know. So here's a letter, here's a letter, here's a letter. So it shifts it's out tough. of place. Um, I had to change all the font. Um, I think that you should use Scrivener um, based on your yeah. formatting like that. That would be great for you. And then you could yeah. you could pump it out in any format you need. Yeah, which is good too. It's just the sixty oh my God, bucks. This is a um, first podcast episode where Jamie's got a recommendation. <laughs> oh my! Uh, <laughs> no, that'd be cool. That'd be yeah. cool. So that's yeah, that's what I like to use. Um, do you plan, Jamie, or do you? What do they call it? Planning and panzing. I don't know. Or do you just get oh, to it? A, a bit of both. I think generally I have an idea. Like I'm, I'm more of a like I think about things. Like I used when I used to plan bands, I used to write songs in my head at work. Like a bit mundane job. I'd have a whole song in my head by the end of the day. Go home, pick it up, run it through. Done. You know, that's cool. So I think I'm kind of similar in in that. Like, obviously, I write things down into sections once I'm, you know, getting it down on paper. Yeah. But um, sometimes, sometimes it's just I just wing it on the way. Like, oh, that's a cool idea. You know? Yeah, kind of. Once you you've yeah. already got an idea what direction you're going. Yeah. And then when you sit down, you just kind of get taken. That's cool too. Yeah. But that um that work sweet spot where you're just your brain's just activated enough, but just yeah. vacant enough yeah. when the ideas start coming, the cell yeah. phone has made that super easy when like that happens to me a lot driving long distances and i can just yeah. be like hey siri hey siri <laughs> you know, I wonder if it'll turn on my phone now she didn't hear me but um my, and then you feel like an idiot because my wife's sitting next to me in the car and i'm like story idea uh <laughs> land, land shark it's the name of the character he's a he's a he's a loan shark but he's gonna go land shark and kim's just looking at me like i feel stupid i'm not gonna do this anymore but yeah i like that um that you do a little of both that's about me too yeah okay yeah, the thing at my new job i can't really zone out because it's you know i work with construction and cranes so it's kind of safety conscience yeah you don't want to die i get it's, that i get it's that. like it's like you zoned out while this you know five ton boxes hanging above your head. yeah that's not gonna work out i can't do it either my attention's got to be all over um then i'm burnt out on the drive home so that's yeah. perfect time to i need like comfort food that's when i turn you guys yeah. on yeah it's the drive oh. home bring the blood pressure down oh the intro music is so soothing it's perfect what the, the new the new one or the old one because I've, I've changed the the uh the old one i would say probably oh is the one I, that right. comes to mind the best because yeah. Depends on which one you go to, though, because when you get into the story time one, that one's also like bedtime music. Oh, yeah. It's super nice. Super nice <laughs> yeah. and soothing. That's the one I'm thinking of. Oh, okay. For the story chat. Rather. Yeah. Story chat. Rather. Yeah. yeah. So it's good stuff. Cool. All right. We've got another three minutes. What are we talking about? Let's do it. I, do, I didn't know we were trying to beat the record. I didn't know. Oh, we've got endless stuff to talk about. Just, just turn, turn around, around, grab a book. Um, any one of them? Any one. Just blindly grab one and just read the synopsis off the back oh sweet <laughs> let's do see, all, all our meetings happen on air oh actually <laughs> it's difficult to do this blindly i gotta tell you let's do keelan let's all do right. keelan you want a little um texas chainsaw massacre vibe yeah so sure. this is this is kin by keelan patrick burke he's another he's just a super nice guy um on a scorching hot summer day in elkwood alabama Claire Lambert staggers naked, wounded, and half blind away from the scene of an atrocity. She is the sole survivor of a nightmare that claimed her friends. And even as she prays for rescue, the killers, a family of cannibalistic lunatics, are closing in. There's a lot more words, but I'm going to stop there because he didn't pay me either. <laughs> So that one's actually pretty good. I um well I shouldn't say actually pretty good. That was a pretty good one to fall upon. He's he's another one that's a punch in your gut horror writer. Mm -hmm. Um if you're not if you're like in an anxious place or you're having any sort of existential crisis, do not read him. You save him for later because <laughs> he will mess up your your thought process for a while. <laughs> so you got to be in a good place before you read him. Oh yeah. yeah. If you're looking to tone it down, you could do Laird Barron's got the um 
the blood standard is the first book in the he's got three of them out now the isaiah coleridge trilogy which will be mm -hmm. like a million books i'm sure while he's done that taps into that paranormal sort of detective vibe as well but he's um he's a hitman from alaska that i think he punched his boss so they had to like oh, cool man. him off and put him in new york <laughs> So he didn't get whacked by his own because his dad was a big deal or something. They they put him in New York to cool off. Um, and then he just starts getting into the scene in central New York, which people, I guess, don't know about is sort of riddled with crime in its own way. Everybody thinks of New York City, but there's a whole state. Yeah. Hence all the Got superheroes, it. right? Yep. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, think, that is true. You think for a city filled with superheroes, there wouldn't be like any crime. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Do we think that Metropolis is New York City or Chicago? Oh, that's York the City. question. New York City, hands down. Yeah. Gotham's more Chicago. That I would agree with that a thousand yeah. percent. But it's darker and it's you know got better mm -hmm. pizza. But aren't they just across the bay from each other? So. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> it's a long drive over there. Jamie, comic books. We don't. We don't. We don't pay attention to detail. But you could fly there very quickly. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So that would work. That was the, one of the best parts of the death of Superman was that Batman was at the funeral to keep the terrorists at bay. Yeah, I enjoyed that combination. It was good stuff. Bad ass. Bad ass. But yeah, if um, if you ever want to know what horror to read, people out there, listeners out there, you can email me at readkerns.com and I'll let you know anything you want awesome. about what's out there, Speaking or just tell about, you to buy my book. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> about that, do one fun final plug. Tell us where we can learn more about you, um, your social media, where we can buy books, all that, and uh, yeah, take us out. I have like a flailing TikTok. You can check that out. Um, I'm, I tried. Book talk's a thing. Um, Instagram, I'm more active on. Twitter, I'm active on. Um, Facebook, there's a Facebook author page and account. You can meet me on there. Um, the website, you can message me directly. It tells me when somebody messages me. And there's been times where I just pick up the phone and start talking back right away. Mm -hmm. And people kind of get blown away by that. Um, only a few people have asked me questions about the books. Mm -hmm. in the in that but it's like the best part of your day when something like that happens right like you hope that doesn't happen on the same day your kid takes his first steps because you don't want them to compete with each other yeah <laughs> Kinda, like that's a good moment when somebody does something like that so yeah. the website's a good place um as well and um yeah i mean good reads but if yeah. you had to choose let's just do two instagram and uh the website yeah, the cool. best that's probably, to reach probably the best. Everyone's on Instagram. I've just joined Twitter, so I just followed you then when you said that. Um, <laughs> it's the I, way I, you I, said I, Instagram. I get a lot of my wrestling stuff from Twitter, so I just mm -hmm. I thought so. Now all my all my followings are all wrestlers and Martin Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> <Monday, please. laughs> oh well, my first one on there was Stephen King. I literally went on Twitter because when Twitter first started, I had another account, and yeah. it was just to follow Stephen King. <laughs> and like Michael Crichton was still alive. So I was like going to see if he was on there. I think yeah. that's when Twitter right around there, maybe he wasn't, but it was right around when he passed. I was like, I'm going to get to talk to my, my idols. No, they don't talk back, but you can say stuff to them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like it because uh, I have had responses from some comic book artists that I really like mm -hmm. um, that when I, I follow, like I just, all I do is I just say, I really enjoy this arc and fantastic. And they'll, you know, say thank you or they'll, give me a little like or whatever. Uh, but I mainly just use it now because I'm not using Facebook as much over the Christmas break. So I can get my wrestling news there without having to go on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and there's perfect really pictures or anything like that. So yeah, it's, 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 I, you know, I'm not paying the $8 for the tick or anything like that, but I'm just, no, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, there's no, there's no upside to it when you pay no, for it. I, I think it's actually, <laughs> worse now because now you don't know who the hell is the real one or all the gags have actual <laughs> seen the one yeah, and yeah that's the best part you get the blue ticket people will think that i'm the john cena if i put a picture of him up like mm -hmm. that it's it's well, no uh, i want to uh, know who i'm talking to uh, apparently i've heard that it's it's not just a blue tick there's other yeah the other perks and all that oh um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah they, they combined it with Twitter blue, right? So yeah. it, you can edit a, a tweet that you've already tweeted and some stuff like that. A little, little danglies get yeah. you to pony up the $8, but I'm sure he'll make it more necessary for monetizing. Um, 
probably. The well, once that happens, I just link Twitter. So, you know, because I just... then I'm already <laughs> on Mastodon anyway, just waiting for I think Gaiman <laughs> jumped over there and I'm, yeah. I just went on there, made an account and posted, well, here we are. <laughs> 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 Who's hearing yeah. it? Nobody. Well, but on that note, we have yeah. we have beaten the record. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm sure we could go longer, but um, what do you say we wrap it up? Thank you, Martin Kearns, for coming back on. Um, thank you for having me guys i'm and sure we'll do it again recommendations and books that i will be reading over the christmas break there we go <laughs> let's hope you have two books to read for next christmas that's the oh, goal. definitely definitely yeah cool cool um i'm sure we'll have you back on again but um until then uh thanks for coming on and thank you for listening listeners and we will catch you next time see you next time take care <laughs>